The Instructor Podcast with Terry Cook, talking with leaders, innovators, experts and game changers about what drives them. Welcome to The Instructor Podcast. This is a show where I help you become an even more awesome driving instructor by speaking to leaders, experts, innovators and game changers. And as always, I am your splendid host, Terry Cook, and I'm delighted to be here and even more delighted that you have chosen to listen because today I'm bringing you a very special bonus episode because recently I attended the ICE live event down in Birmingham. I'm saying down, it's down for me, it may not be down for you, but either way, I attended the ICE live event and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. And while I was down there, I was able to get some clips with some of the presenters and the, the organizer and some, you know, potentially more familiar faces for you. So, plated them together, I'm going to share some of my thoughts to give you this little bonus episode. But just before we dive into that, I am going to take a moment to implore you to go and click subscribe wherever you're listening, whether it's Spotify or Apple or wherever it may be, go and click subscribe. So these episodes drop into your feed whenever you release a new one, especially a random one like this little bonus episode. Because one of the things people don't necessarily realize is that most people don't subscribe. They go and pick and choose episodes, but it's actually the subscribing to the episode that helps with the podcast discovery. So if you could go and click subscribe, I would massively appreciate that. And if you feel an extra generous, you can share it with your friends as well. But let's dive into this show, because as I mentioned, I was at the ICE Live event and um, thoroughly enjoyed it. It, it was something new, something different for me. Heard from a lot of different speakers I haven't come across before, some of which you'll be hearing again on the podcast in a future episode. But really interesting. It took away lots for the instructor podcast, lots for the that side of it that I do, but also lots that I can potentially take away and not necessarily apply, but utilize and get ready for and get ideas and get inspiration for my driving school. And I would highly recommend that any instructors listening to this get down to the next one or at least jump onto the online stuff and look what's available online and if you can get down to the next one before i give you any more of my thoughts let's take a moment to listen to some of the people i met on the day uh, so now joined by james evans the man behind ice live how are we doing yeah good good to good to be here with you thanks so much i'm keen to ask you why why ice live what's what was the premise behind this so ICE is the immersive uh, community, or ICE Hub is Immersive Community Education Hub, and that's obviously a group of people uh, drawn from local authorities, fire and rescue, police forces, anyone that's involved in delivering road and community safety virtual reality. Uh, and we had webinars, we had great speakers, and we exchanged a lot of knowledge. And it was just a logical progression, really, to come to a venue and actually do that all face to face. It, it's been great for me seeing some of this stuff today because I'm very, very raw with VR. Very raw. I'm scared of it. I mean, honestly. <laughs> um, but I'm, how far away is it? Because what I'm seeing today, there's some really awesome stuff, but it's very much arm's length for the common folk, if that makes sense. How far away do you think it is from being commonplace? That's a really good question. I mean, cost is a big barrier to this sort of stuff. We've got um, yeah, mixed reality here. The headsets are seven and a half thousand pounds. You can do some amazing stuff with it. Um, but even a even a, a standard set to deliver uh, in a classroom set would be three or four hundred pounds. Um, and ultimately, then you need the films and the content to deploy. So it's really set up for, you know, organizations that can deliver in a group environment. I think the game changer for this will be when consumer sets really take off. So people having sets in their own home uh, and you can build content that people can actually consume uh, by themselves, whether they will or not. It's certainly in the road safety space. There's no shortage of good hazard perception training. Uh, there's no shortage of good stuff for safe driving for life. But people's propensity to kind of proactively consume that even though it can make them a better driver and a safer driver, um, it is limited. So we're always going to need people to deliver, people to go out there and actually um, you know, p push this onto people. Uh, and VR's certainly been effective, whether it's a gimmick or not, at, at, at capturing people's imagination. And we're starting to see that if you do it in the right way, the evidence shows it can actually have some statistically significant effects in their behavior and attitudes as well. Yeah. And I think the discussion where people use it, maybe for another day, a bit of a longer discussion there, I think. But... How excited are you about the future and what's coming up with VR? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not I'm not a VR fanatic. I never have been. We we, we sort of produced um, 2D film for a long time. And then in 2015, we produced the UK's first virtual reality road safety film with Leicestershire Fire and Rescue Service. And I think by today's standards, uh, using that as an isolated film, we would potentially be doing more harm than good. It's only because that has been built into a 
um, you know, an actual intervention and VR is one part of it, then we can sort of uh, authoritatively say that's probably doing some good. Uh, I'm excited for how mixed reality can, um, can, can, can be used. So where we engage with part virtual, part, um, you know, real world environment. Um, but as a, as a non-fanatic, I'm still, I'm still excited about this transition from early adoption where it's just the enthusiasts and it's just, you know, people uh, doing flight training or something very specific into perhaps mainstream adoption where we see people using this uh, as, part of, as part of everyday life. Cool. And I don't know if you've got anything planned, so I might be putting you on the spot slightly. It's another event next year, perhaps? I hope so. It won't be here because they're changing um, how they run this venue and they won't be accepting any external um, uh, events. It's just a police venue. Uh, so possibly, I mean, there's talk of maybe doing one year in person, one year online. Um, at the moment, the technology is moving sufficiently fast and there's a lot more people wanting to get into delivering road and community safety education in VR. So um there's certainly potential for the event to, to to grow and maybe we'll move it somewhere else in the country but yeah i would expect a, 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 an event of some description to happen next year for sure awesome uh, well you have been on the podcast before but do you want to remind everyone where they can find you if they want more james goodness well yeah i mean you can always catch me at james at firstcar.co.uk i'm on linkedin uh the james evans and um that's really the only social channels that i've i've got but do feel free to email anytime well, well, thanks for giving us a few minutes there. Thank you for this event. It's, I've really enjoyed it. Thanks for coming. Great great to see you there. Thank you. All right, so now we're joined by Dr. Daniel Bishop. How are we doing? Hi, yeah, I'm doing well, thank you, apart from the fine weather here in Birmingham. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, well, thank you for joining us today at this uh, Ice Live event. Um, do you want to start off just by telling us a little bit about you and a bit about what you do? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm an academic at Brunel University London, which is um, based in Hillingdon. And I am a psychologist by trade, chartered by the BPS. I work in sport health and exercise sciences at Brunel. And I merged all of my expertise in attention, perception, and cognition in sporting context with my real world experience of being a commuter cyclist, literally clocking up thousands of miles going across London in practically every direction. And I find myself here today, several years later, having made that decision, and I don't regret it. Awesome. Well, you just fascinated me with your, uh, your, your presentation. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Thank you. Um, in particular, like the, the, the VR stuff you were doing with children, basically, young adults and children uh, around cycling. Um, one thing caught my attention in particular was saying that the, the, the children that had done that VR work, you know, were a lot safer on the roads afterwards. Just want to tell us a little bit about what you've done there. Yeah, that was fascinating. Of course, it's what I wanted to see, but so glad to actually see it come out once you've conducted a rigorous scientific study. So we had 33 children in years five and six of primary school. So that's nine to 11 year olds. And half of them were just over half. In fact, 17 came into our lab. And we weren't using a VR headset. We were using a flat screen approach with three screens wrapped around them as they sat in the middle on a bike on a cycle trainer. And their task over 52 minutes worth of cycling was to look around and see various things. Um, and I was guiding them with a pre-recorded set of instructions as they went through. They were also required to look over their shoulder at two different screens, one over their right, one over their left shoulder, to check whether there was a car present and whether there was a cyclist present, respectively. And what we found was the group that came into the lab and did that, <clears throat> when we took them out on the road and they were assessed one-to-one -one by trained bikeability cycle instructors, that they vastly outperformed the children who did not come into the lab in terms of what we call the four core functions of the National Standard for Cycle Training. So that's their observation, their communication, their positioning in the road, and their awareness of road user priorities. I love it. Uh, and it was a fascinating watch. But the other thing I want to ask you just, just briefly is... Um, I'm a big believer that drivers need to drive better. They need to drive safer around cyclists, horses, vulnerable road users, that type of stuff. But you're taking a real positive approach in training cyclists mm. and you know putting the emphasis on cyclists as well. Why are, we, why are you taking that positive approach when I see this much negativity about? Yeah, it's really interesting you should say that. And I've got so many answers to that question. But I suppose one thing is that I would like to empower the cyclist and not least young cyclists. So I'll explain what I mean by that. Um, as a cyclist and a driver, so we need to avoid this rhetoric of saying cyclists yep. versus drivers because it's just not the case. Um, I am very mindful of what it's like to be a driver and get frustrated by an inconsiderate cyclist. But equally, as a cyclist, I'm used to being frustrated by inconsiderate drivers, <laughs> although I'd have to say less so. The first scenario I described is more common in my experience. So it's increasing that road user empathy. And I thought, well, let's empower the vulnerable road users who hopefully will be and should be the predominant road users in towns and cities in the coming years and decades. 
I like it. So, um, anyone that listens to this podcast know I'm all for positivity. So, did you want to finish up by telling people where they can find you if they want to find a little bit more about you? Absolutely. So, they can check me out at Dr. Dan Bishop on LinkedIn, or they can email yes, me so. at daniel.bishop at brunel, B R U N E L, dot A C dot UK. And you can also look at my Brunel page and you'll find out a lot about my research and you'll see various links to research initiatives and LinkedIn. Awesome. I'll put links for that in the show notes. Well, thanks for giving us a bit of your time today. Absolute pleasure. Right, so we're now joined by James Mam, and how are we doing, James? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I uh, all the better for seeing your smiley face. <laughs> uh, so, do you want to tell us a little bit about what you do? So, uh, I'm from Leicestershire Fire and Rescue Service, and I'm the road safety coordinator for the service. Excellent. Well, I've just watched your presentation today. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, it's not something I've come across before, and I've just said it wrong, and I've forgotten how I said it. The Hazard Express. Hazard Express is correct. Just tell, because uh, my listeners are driving, let's just tell our listeners a little bit about the Hazard Express. So the Hazard Express is a fully immersive virtual reality car crash simulator um, that has a, a motion platform, so it immerses the individual into uh, what it is like to be involved in a crash. So you're the front seat passenger in a car, you're driving down the road, Next thing, tractor pulls out and you're involved in a crash and you see the aftermath of the emergency services turning up. It, it looks amazing. You know, I'm not going on this thing because my back snapped at the minute, so probably not the best choice for me, but it looks really good and I'm, I'm keen. What sort of feedback have you had from the people going on? Some of the feedback we've had is that it's fantastic. Every driver uh, on the road should do it. Every learner uh, should also get involved and get onto this vehicle but the thing is it's limited because we've only got six seats and there's one of these vehicles within the country so if you think about how many learner drivers there are within the uk there's thousands if you could click your fingers and make it happen would you advise everyone to get in it before they start taking lessons definitely um because it shows you the dangers of the fatal four uh, which is speeding mobile phones drinking drugs and seatbelts. cool and is there any plans for more do you know, that you're aware of? Uh, Bedfordshire yeah. are following suit, so they are getting a vehicle built at the moment. So the Hazard Express at the, this second is the only one in the country, but Bedfordshire are currently building one, but it's only going to have four seats inside of it. Awesome. And if people want to find out more either about that or anything from you, where they can find So it. if you go on Google, type yeah. in Leicestershire Fire Hazard Express, there'll be more information all about the vehicle on there. Awesome. Cool. Thank you for your time today. All right. Thank you. So big thanks to James, Daniel and James for sparing me a few minutes on the day to talk about their presentations and the things they've got going on. But I just wanted to jump in for a few minutes before we move on to the next batch of interviews because I was thinking about what we do as driving instructors and what is at the core of what we actually do. And essentially it's road safety. That, that's that's all it comes down to at the end. We are teaching people to be safe on the roads so that when they go out, you know, they're not essentially being idiots and causing problems. And there'll be people that scoff at that comment, but, you know, think of the stuff you see online. Think of all the criticism the DVSA gets for being test-centered and all the, the, the comments around, I teach driving for life, not just for a test and, and this stuff. We are, we teach road safety, but how much do we actually embrace it as instructors? You know, whether that is the, the virtual reality route or it's taking on board the Honest Truth or Project Edward or campaigning for the brake charities or Fresh Drivers UK or whoever else we can think of. How much do we actually embrace that? And I'm not sure we embrace it enough, if I'm being honest. So one of the big things I would suggest to you guys is to get to some of these events. They don't necessarily have to be the, the big national ones, the like the, the ICE event that I've just been to that are all ticketed. There are lots of local events, road safety charities and road safety organizations and, and, and that kind of stuff that you can go and work with, you can go to, you can engage with. And if you think about it from a, a business standpoint, imagine that you're a solo, independent driving instructor you can go and team up with some of these smaller local road safety organizations, the local ones in your area, get in touch with your council, see who you can work with. And I just think that we don't do this stuff enough as an industry, and it's something I'm going to be embracing more. You'll probably see it seeping into the podcast a little bit more, but I would definitely advise that you get to some of these events that you can, even if you know, you're know paying for these big ones. It was a wonderful experience to see some of the, the technological advances that are going on that are going to come into our industry. And there may be a little way off. You know, It might be five, 10 years before this stuff becomes a bit more mainstream. 
but it's stuff that we can talk about with our students now, you know, can embrace the concept of them in a sensible way <laughs> using computer games. You know, maybe GTA isn't the best thing, but if you try and follow the roads, it does actually get you thinking. Trust me, I've done it. Although, you know, if you listen to a recent episode of The Green Room, you'll have also heard, I would like to just see what happens when you go off the bridge. Don't try and teach that. But I just feel that, that there is a place for this stuff as instructors. And we are the bastions of road safety. We are the bridge, the barrier between people learning and people driving. And we're so negligent of this stuff. Not everyone, you know, please don't think I'm tying everyone with the same brush. But I am criticizing myself a little bit here as well. So... You know, look for these events, get to these events. If you can't afford to go to the, the bigger ones, then get yourself to some of the smaller ones. Look out for places like the DITC, the Driving Instructor and Trainers Collective, who recently did a raffle that Phil Cowley won to go to this event, so it didn't cost him a ticket. You can find this stuff if you look for it. So really do implore you um, to, to take a look on this. And even if you're not going to the events, Head over to the show notes. You can find all the links to the websites and the stuff that's been discussed today. I'll try and put a blog up on my website, theinstructorpodcast.com, so you can go and check out the resources that are available to you right now. But I'm going to cover my high horse a little bit now. I feel like I may have lost a few listeners there, but I want to listen to some of the other people that I had a chat with on the day. These are a few more familiar faces or voices, I should say, that hopefully you'll recognize. Right, so we're now joined by Andrew Love of the ADI NJC. How are we doing, Andrew? Very well, thank you. Also of Let's Instruct Drive Instruct uh, Academy Partnership. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and first appearance on the podcast, so welcome on. Thank board. you. Uh, and I'm talking to you live from Ice Live, actually. Yeah. Um, now, this is your second time, Aaron. That's right. It's my second time. Um, I came uh, last year because I recognised that at some point, virtual reality is going to enter into learn the L market and I was very interested last year because the AA have got um, some virtual reality uh, driver instructor training and Mark Bourne was speaking um, so this year I came to see what had changed and it seems that there's a, a lot more a lot changed Last year, if you wanted to do VR training, it seemed to have you, you needed to have uh, lots of heavy equipment and things like this. And this year, it's become far more portable. How far away do you reckon we are from it being commonplace and people learning to drive using VR? I think for driving instructors, the ordinary ADI, I think it might be quite a way away. I think there's some issues uh, around the immersive technology in the vehicles but i do think as uh the teenagers these days are getting used to virtual reality training it will start to come in and it may well uh there may be well be some opportunities for adis to get on in with um online vrs training sessions or uh groups so I think there could be opportunities. Do you think that, so if this event runs again next year, for example, do you think it's a good opportunity for ADIs to come along and, and see what's coming up? Oh, very, very definitely. Last year, I think I was the only ADI there. Uh, this year, we've got uh, five or six ADIs. Um, training is going more online. We know that. Um, I think it's essential that if we want to be at the forefront, we should be here. Awesome. Well, do you want to just tell people where they can find you? Uh, at um, Andrew at L-U-V, the figure two, D-R-V dot co dot UK. Or you can call me on 7 512 Awesome. Well, thanks for giving us a few minutes of your time today. Thank you. And we're now joined by Phil Cowley, competition winner Phil Cowley. How are we doing? I'm, I'm brilliant. I'm very happy to have won the competition and come here today. I was I was considering coming before I won the competition, um, so um, to win it and then and it pushed me over the edge to to come along. Excellent. And um, how did you find it? Because we're, we're talking now as everyone else is packing away. 
Uh, so we're talking at the very end when we've seen all the presentations. I know you've been playing a lot of stuff, so how well have you found it? Um, yeah, really good, actually. I think it's it's really interesting how VR could play a role, and well, is playing a role in, in, in driver safety. Um, I, I'd love to see it come more into driving instructor um and, and and how that might work um maybe like you say starting with the hazard perception potentially um but certainly sort of, sort of had us hazard awareness we saw a um a presentation on cycle awareness and how that helped with bikeability and i could see the implications of that working really well with, with learner drivers coming to driving lessons already aware of looking around and and the benefits of blind spots and and searching for for dangers the uh, the one that excited me was the um, i keep i even said it's the wrong like, to the guy that i spoke to the the hazard express <laughs> um like you know the people that have been on it are all saying this should be mandatory for everyone learning to drive and i, I think it should be but how far away do you reckon? I know it's a guess, but how far away do you reckon we are for, for this being more implemented in learning to drive? I don't know, like maybe 10 years, maybe, I'd say, because it's coming to be mainstream. Like, I think the technology is already there, but it, 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 it needs to be more, more mainstream. Maybe more, more people are buying these headsets for fun and gaming and stuff like that anyway. So maybe that's the route that it will go down where rather than us supplying the kits it might be that there's a software or game out there a bit like like you can play road trucker games and things like that maybe there's a software game out there that can help um that they can buy before the lessons or or someone like i don't know driving test success creates a game um in something similar like, like that cool so last question i'm putting you on the spot um when's your podcast coming out where can people find it <laughs> uh first of november um and you can find it anywhere in, in, in the podcasting world uh, <laughs> and if you head over to uh the instructor trainer.com um you can find my details if you have any questions about it um but yeah first of november first episode will be with uh laura diana and decalion from the um lose pdi group um, and then on the same day, we'll be releasing a episode with Emma, um, who was a recently qualified ADI, telling her story of how she became qualified. And if someone's going to go search for it, what's it called? Oh, good chat. <laughs> um, Cowley's Instructor Training Podcast. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing a few minutes with us today, Phil. And now on the Chris Benstead podcast, we are joined by Chris Benstead. How are we doing, Chris? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Yes. We're, we're currently outside the... Uh, Tally Hall Embassy uh, at the end of the ICE Live thing um, conference. Uh, what are your thoughts? Um, really interesting. It makes you think about the future of things um, in the same way that um, Back to the Future made you think about the future of things. Because I don't think we're there yet. Um, I think for me, we saw what is a really useful tool for now when it comes to um, to educating people. But when it comes to teaching people, we're not quite there yet because we need more interaction. No, I'd agree. I think the, the whole thing is fascinating. And uh, for me today, it was looking at it and thinking, yeah, that's interesting, but no, it was to us. That's interesting, but no, it was to us. That's really interesting. That's going to be used to us. Um, well, I said it to someone before, and I forget, well, it might have been Phil, I said it to the... Um, the uh, hazard express wagon yes. is is amazing uh, i couldn't go on it because my back but it's just that if we could get every learner to do that before they started that'd be awesome yes absolutely and i think that would then mean that we'd be giving them a solution which i think is the thing that's often missing they do the hard hitting you're gonna die you know don't do this but handing them to a driving instructor and saying now we can show you the right way. Now we can show you the the, the right path. Um, I think tying that up that that's something that's really interesting to us. As as a double barreled question, is there anything you've seen today where you thought I can take that away and use it today, uh, or is there anything you've seen today where you thought in the future that's going to be ace? Um, I made notes 
because uh, I don't remember very well. Um, but there's just little things, and there were a lot of little things, but nothing that sort of leapt out. Um, there were frameworks of how to look at things. Uh, so I think I'm going to go and reassess what I do. Um, I don't think it was anything that on its own standalone was going to change the world. Um, but I think, you know, it's it's that approach of um, well, the, the fact that st- uh, has stayed with me was um, that mobile phone use affects you for five minutes after you hang up the phone. And that's always been a pet thing, you know, the mobile phone use um, rules. And I think that was quite an interesting. Although nothing to do with VR. No, no. But but... It, I did like the way they tied that stuff in. It's like we're talking about this aspect of VR, but this is the mythology behind it. This is why we've done it. And, um, yeah, I, mean, I must admit, selfishly, I've made, got a list of people now that are coming on the podcast and that are coming to do Meganar and all sorts of stuff because there's some real interesting stuff there. But I, I asked Andrew, I love this question, so I'm going to throw it to you as well. In what would, would instructors benefit? You know, a, a normal, independent, solo driving instructor, would they benefit from coming to uh, something like this? Would they benefit? Yes, because I think we've all gone away with, more knowledge and knowledge is a good thing because you can go and put it to use um but it's not cheap and i think at the cost and adding in day off work and all of those other things um i i think there's probably not enough to turn up on mass um you know i think we 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 should all send terry along every year and you can you can do a summary for us uh because as you said there wasn't enough in there that was directly relevant to us. I I think I agree, although I would probably be a bit more lines of I think we should try and come to something like this once. Yes. You know, I think that it's great to come and and you know, I I, I come with a two pronged approach. I've got the the driving instructor side of me and then I've got the, the podcast and the business side of me. So but if it just as a driving instructor I would have I would have loved this. Solely as a driving instructor, would I have come twice? I don't know. But I'm I'm glad I came once for that. Yes. And I think that anything like that, you know, whether it's this, whether it's the expo, you know, whatever it is, I think it's it's well worth going to. Um because even just on the slightest side of that, you know, I've come away with five or six different contacts that I could turn to help with information and, and people that aren't after money or wanting to buy I'm sure I mean I'm sure they would let me buy something if I wanted to, but you know, that I could ring up and say, I've got this problem, what's your suggestion? That they come to me. And I think that's always a good thing as well. An underrated would, would you agree? Yes. Yeah, definitely. And that for me, uh, I think is about uh one of the problems that instructors face. You get handed your badge and you get left to get on with it. You need knowledge and you need resources and we know that in in our sector people are that the source of those that knowledge and those resources so the more people you know the better it is um and then you know you you get just how how you you get the um the next things that come along and you stay at the front of your game exactly and uh, there's currently a squirrel over there digging looking for nuts looking for his tea which is uh, <laughs> what I'm going to go do so yeah it's been a pleasure chris as always so a big thank you to all those guys for joining me on today's episode. Really appreciated it. And and there was a lot more than what I put on today, but I tried to pick the guys that I thought were very specific to our industry and the things that would be the most interesting. And also, I wanted to enjoy the day, uh, and I needed to do other things as well as record. But, you know, potentially, let me know your feedback on these episodes, because I have released quite a few episodes this year where it's not just been me and a guest. Uh, obviously, today's, I recorded one at the the IMTD recently where we had free presentations. You know, there's the episodes I do at the Expo, that kind of stuff. Let me know what you think of these ones or whether you are more inclined just for the interviews or whether these make a nice difference. So I just want to take a moment to thank you guys for listening. Uh, I say it all the time, but if no one was listening, the show would be nowhere near as good because I would just be talking to myself. So I really appreciate you listening. I'd love it if you go and click subscribe for me. And if you're already subscribed, and if you want more, well, go check out the Instructor Podcast Premium. Over there, that's where there's loads of exclusive content we've got trainings around the standards check and coaching and mindfulness and self-care and confidence and growing your driving school and a whole host of other stuff and that's available for as little as 10 pounds a month you get all the shows including that there is an additional tier where if you want to upgrade 
you get a lot of other bonus stuff as well, like live sessions, live recordings, interaction, all that kind of cool stuff. But one thing I do want to make you aware of, there is also a free trial. So head over to www.theinstructorpodcast.com. You can find more details over there or go to the show notes. You'll find direct links to get to it. And you can sign up for a free trial and for a week you get access to over 120 things. So if you wanted to, you could sign up for a week, listen to everything and then disappear. Now, I'd rather you didn't. I'd rather you signed up. But either way, that option is there to you. Go and check it out, www.theinstructorpodcast.com. And the last thing I'm going to say, just as I wrap up this episode, is at the end of last season, I started having a very unique sign-off, which was, remember, if you're not enjoying your lessons, you're doing them wrong. And while I still agree with that, looking back, I think it was taken a little bit away from the ethos of the show. I'm going to go back to my sign-off, right back to season one, which is quite simply... Let's keep raising standards. The Instructor Podcast with Terry Cook. Talking with leaders, innovators, experts and game changers about what drives them.